Pastor Stan. Welcome, my friends, in the name of the Lord. Coffee chairs, I got my coffee right here. I'm ready to talk about the issues of life. A lot of questions get asked, and so we're going to try to answer them on uh, this channel. And by the way, if you appreciate our time together, feel free to like and subscribe. All right, today's question is, how do I talk about Jesus? How do I talk about Jesus in the world in which we live? Because, you know, it seems there's some opposition out there. Well, you'd be right. And so we're going to talk a little bit about today uh, how to share our faith or tell others about Jesus. So number one on my list is I have to know about Jesus and I have to know how to explain about him, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have to be able to explain in my own words how he came from heaven, was born on Christmas morning, you remember the story of the manger and everything, and be able to explain how he lived his life, taught us about God, and then died on the cross for our sins, and not just died on the cross for our sins, but was raised from the dead and ascended to heaven. So I have to be able to tell that story and know that, depending on who I'm talking to, I might receive some opposition, some skeptical looks, some downright derision sometimes. Uh, or, and this is the toughest part for witnessing for the Lord, is rejection. I mean, who wants to be rejected? Who likes to be rejected or shunned or outside the circle or whatever it might be? Well, no one really. But that's the cost that I must face, that I must pay, if I'm going to the risk of telling others about Jesus. So the first thing I want to do, and you can write this down, this is the first thing, I must know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I must know what it is. I must be able to write it down maybe in 200 words. I need to be able to, to write it down, to know it, to be able to recite it, to say it back to someone. And uh, say it back to someone means that, guess what? I might just want to practice that. So if you have a safe person, somebody you know that your mom, you know, your sister, your brother, your roommate, your wife, your husband, whoever it might be, you can practice. You can write it down, 200 words or less, and then practice it, uh, telling it to, to them. And the first couple of times are going to be pretty awkward, obviously, but the more I practice, the better I'm going to become at it. So I have to know what the Bible says about the story and gospel of Jesus, the good news. Secondly, if I'm going to witness about Jesus Christ, I have to be able to tell others about what he has done for me. What has Jesus done for me? That's one thing to be able to say, well, that was the Bible, that was written long ago, this and that. But when I'm telling my own story, now people are more attuned to listen because this is me talking. I mean, they have to say that what happened to me did not happen. And uh, most people are a little shaky about doing that. They can say the Bible's not true, but if they say my story's not true, well, uh, how does that make them look? Uh, not too well. And, uh, and I, and I want to be able to say my story in such a way that uh, makes sense, is engaging and listen. It does not go on and on and on. So what do I want it to be? 200 words or less. That's right, 200 words or less. You've probably been talking to the person sometimes who you get to a certain point in the story and you wish they had stopped right there, but they went on and on and on. So I don't want to do that myself because then people get bored with me talking. So 200 words. Now I'm writing what? I'm writing, first of all, about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news about Jesus, the gospel story. And now I'm writing about my own experience. How did Jesus change my life? How did I come to know Jesus as Savior? Then I need to be able to say that back. So I'm practicing two things now. I'm practicing what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, 200 words or less, and then also my own personal story, 200 words or less. And then when I get both of those together, then I practice with someone who's safe to talk to. And maybe that person might do the same assignment and uh, practice on me. So we practice on each other, telling the story about Jesus and my own personal story. Now, before you think, hey, wait a minute, you know, I'm just uh, me and uh, not so good at talking. Certainly not like you are, Pastor. But here's the thing. I don't do it by myself. I don't do it alone. alone and you won't do it alone either if you're trusting the Lord to help you do it. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus says in uh, chapter 14 of John's Gospel, verse 26, here's what he says. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, 
that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. So for every person who has accepted Jesus as their Savior, in a mystery of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit comes to dwell within me. I am born again, if you will. So now I am not alone, and I'm not by myself. I might think I would get tongue-tied, but the Holy Spirit helps me remember the things Jesus said, helps me, me remember my own story. And then I have the opportunity to say it in a way that actually makes sense, because the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, is helping me present the gospel of Jesus Christ and my own story. And if I'm able to do that, do those things, and know that God is going to help me, then I can witness to anyone, anywhere, anytime. And the story may never come out exactly the same, in the same order, but know that the Holy Spirit is working on the other side of the person that I'm talking to. The Holy Spirit is having me talk to somebody because the Holy Spirit is helping that person as they journey towards salvation as well. So, what have we learned today, preacher? Well, here's a couple of things that I've learned. Number one, if I am going to talk to others about Jesus, I must learn the story about Jesus. 200 words or less. Be able to write it down and commit it to memory in some way, knowing the Holy Spirit will give me the opportunities and then the words to say to communicate the gospel. So I must know it very well, find a person to practice with. Secondly, I also must know my story in 200 words or less. And sometimes that's a little more difficult for us to write up because it's me, it's my story, and I end up becoming vulnerable. But in the end, guess what? The person I'm talking to might have the very same experience. And then, guess, guess what happens then? The person relates with what I'm saying. I relate with your story. Maybe what God did for you, God can do for me. You see how that works out together. So I must know the story of Jesus. I must know my own story. And I must practice telling my story and the story of Jesus to other folks. And by the practicing, I'll become more proficient and more trusting of the Holy Spirit to help. All right, so that's how I talk to others about Jesus. Would you have prayer with me? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for giving me the great privilege of telling others about Jesus. Help me learn how to tell others about Jesus and my own salvation story as well. And thank you for loving me. And I love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, my friends, it's been good to be with you today. The Lord be with you in your life. Let me just say, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them below, and uh, I'll try to address uh, those questions, as many as I can, in upcoming uh, videos that we're going to go ahead and put up. As always, if you like this presentation, if you've appreciated it, like and subscribe. Lord be with you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.